Welcome back to Overthinking Tech. My desk moved so you get an even messier view somehow. We need to talk about direct ML. What it is, how it works, why it's awesome, and when you shouldn't use it. Firstly, what's direct ML? Technically, direct ML is a low level direct X 12 extension or plugin. It's made by Microsoft and it's designed to work across a, a wide range of GPUs. So personally, I've tested this on 30 series Nvidia cards, Intel's Arc A770, as well as the 6600 XT I'm going to use you uh, to show you in this demo here. And it's sort of advertised as being a part of DirectX 12 that would allow perhaps game makers to incorporate machine learning tasks into a game and use the DirectX 12 library to have the GPU handle those tasks, regardless of what GPU it is. But we can also use it to just do general TensorFlow or PyTorch acceleration on a workstation. And that's what I'm gonna be looking at today is how we can use this for general purposes. This can also be used as a result to run things like Stable Diffusion, which I believe utilizes TensorFlow. And you can do that on an AMD GPU. I'm not gonna go in that much depth today. I'm just gonna get show you how to get this set up and running. So first thing first, we need to go to Windows Features. So if you open search and type in features, go to turn Windows features on or off. And what we need here is Windows subsystem for Linux. That'll be this guy right here. We will also need virtual machine platform. We don't need the hypervisor platform and we don't need Windows hypervisor in general, but we need this virtual machine platform. Selecting OK is gonna go through the automatic installation process for these. My system's probably a little bit faster than yours because I actually already have them downloaded. Uh, and then you will need to restart. Once the system is restarted, the next thing we're gonna do is go to the Microsoft Store. I know a lot of people don't like using it, but this is a system made by Microsoft, so. We're gonna search for Ubuntu. Man, this search is terrible. Uh, I'm gonna select Ubuntu 22.04. That's our newest. Make sure you're grabbing something that's actually made by Canonical. And once we get the button, we're gonna go ahead and install this. Now might be a good chance to look at what hardware is in this system. I'm running a Ryzen 3600 with a 6600 XT. So this is a sort of budget to mid tier gaming PC at this point. I do have 16 gigs of RAM in here. I would recommend that you have at least 16 gigs of RAM. If you try this with only eight, it's gonna fill up pretty quickly. Once this finishes downloading and installing, we should be able to go ahead and open it. It'll also show up here if you want to open it and not use the store. So if you get the error where it says no file found or system file not found or whatever that error says, uh, the trick seems to be to open up PowerShell and run WSL config backslash U and then you need the name of the distribution. Uh, and what this does is it unregisters it from WSL. This seems to be an issue with the fact that I had Ubuntu and then uninstalled Ubuntu, so this likely won't affect you. Then we can go ahead and open Ubuntu, and now we should get this installing. This may take a few minutes. So sit back and wait. We'll be prompted to enter a new username and a new password. This will drop us into an account that has our username we just specified, as well as the system name 
that is going to be the same as the system. Yes, I have themed PCs. That's why this one's called Aquarium. From here, there's only a couple of commands that we need to get up and running. And I'm going to post all of these down, I think just in the video description. Uh, so feel free to copy and paste. The first thing we're gonna need is to simply download Miniconda. Next thing we'll do is run that Miniconda script we just downloaded. Yes, to accept the terms. Default location is fine. Once we've done that, we are going to use the conda command to create a new Python environment. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna do this with Python 3.6. You don't have to necessarily use this version of Python. Oh, actually, first thing first, we have to open and then close that terminal. You should see the base here. Now we should be able to go ahead and create this TensorFlow dash direct ML environment. So that right there after the dash N is our name. And then Python equals 3.6 is specifying the Python version we're using. Hit Y and then enter to accept that it's gonna download all these things for the environment. And then we just need to run conda activate tensorflow dash direct ml or whatever you chose to name this. Technically we could do all of this in the main environment as well, but I recommend whenever you're gonna mess with something creating a new environment. Next thing we're gonna do is simply do a pip install tensorflow direct ml. Once that's finished, we can run Python and we should see the 3.6 version that we selected. And then if we do import TensorFlow as TF, we should be able to print out the list of GPUs that TensorFlow can see. So there we see our direct ML device enumeration and creating device on adapter zero, AMD RX 6600 XT. So basically what we're seeing here is this direct ML plugin is creating kind of like a virtual GPU for TensorFlow to use on this adapter that we have installed. In this case, it's a 6600 XT. In practice, this has worked for me with any DirectX 12 GPU. I have not tried integrated graphics. That one would be interesting. But here we can use our 6600 XT in order to run TensorFlow now. Now I've taken the test script that I've been using and I put that on the desktop here. In order to add it to the Linux machine, we can actually just open up File Explorer and come down here to Linux and we'll see that Ubuntu 22.04 machine we're running. Uh, you can actually see multiple virtual machines this way, and we'll be able to access its files just like any folder on our system. Uh, so I'm gonna go home to my home directory, and I'm just gonna copy that in. Now, if I quit Python and do an ls, I can see that Python test large.py file. Running Python, oh, I don't have matplotlib, there we go. It's a Saturday morning. I can't be expected to remember commands perfectly. Now I should be able to run this. Uh, again, ignore my divide by zero errors. They don't actually affect what the script is doing. We see it grabbing that direct ML device, and now we can see training start. If we open up task manager here, and we look at that GPU, actually we're showing no usage. Uh, that is not going to be an accurate representation. Um, one of your giveaways here should be that the temperature is going to increase. I don't know if it'll show up on any of these. Compute one, zero. Okay, there we go. So we are seeing on compute zero the usage from TensorFlow running. And again, this is a mini ITX case. 
we're, we're pulling back the max power of the 6600 XT here. So I let the first Epic on this run out and we can see that this took about 139 seconds. Uh, by comparison, looking at the result I got for the Intel Arc A770, this took 97 seconds on an A770 or 52 seconds on an RTX 3060. So not an amazing result, but still not bad given that we are now using a GPU that we previously couldn't use before. Now, I said earlier, I have to talk about when you shouldn't use DirectML. Here I have DirectML set up and running, exact same setup as I just showed on the last system. Uh, but this is on my sort of primary system here. And I'm running a 5800X with a 3070 Ti. This is a much more powerful GPU than a 6600 XT. It's also, and this is important, distinctively more powerful than an RTX 3060. Should all be clear on that. 3070 Ti is more powerful than an RTX 3060. If I go ahead and run that same exact script, at this point it's just becoming my go-to test script. Once again, I do not have matplotlib. We see DirectML creating device on NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. And training's gonna go actually reasonably fast here. This is not a bad time per step. So with that first epic done, what's the problem here? 78 seconds on my 3070 Ti beats out the 6600 XT. It beats out the A770, but it's slower than when I ran this exact same script on the RTX 3060. The issue here is that DirectML is not as fast as running native drivers. So that's DirectML. Super cool, super handy tool, but at the end of the day, it's slower than native drivers. That being said, I'm still going to use it because it is exceptionally fast to spin up a new environment. And if you're on an AMD GPU, it's currently your only option. And it's a pretty good one. 6600 XT still, yeah, I mean, yes, it was slower, but it was still usable. And if you're a student, or someone who's just looking to run casual TensorFlow for stable diffusion, it is a perfectly valid option that will allow you to use basically any GPU you have. 